Welcome. Welcome to this podcast about half argument properties or half angle properties. In the last podcast, um, Ms. Peterson derived these double argument properties, which are in this box uh, of above on the top of the screen. And we're going to look at two of these things, two versions of the cosine double argument property this one and this one and we're going to do a little bit of algebraic manipulation so that we get these things called the half argument properties which look like this the ones we're going to derive right now are the are the one for sine and the one for cosine so let's see if we can derive take this one on the left hand side here and make it look like that uh, half argument property for sine so i can subtract one from both sides and get negative one plus cosine 2 theta equals negative 2 sine squared theta. And by the way, um, in the properties up there, uh, they were using cosine 2a, and I'm using cosine 2 theta. But remember, we're just looking at patterns here. The, the point of this double argument property is that the argument on the left-hand side is 2 theta, and the one on the right-hand side is half is is theta so um, just have to have to have that relationship hold true next thing I'm going to do here is multiply both sides by negative one half and that gives me negative one half times negative one plus cosine two theta equals sine squared theta then I'm going to just take the negative sign and distribute that through. Just just negative sign. It's going to go in there and distribute. So that changes the sign inside, and I get positive one minus cosine two theta equals sine squared theta. Then I'm going to square root both sides, and I get plus or minus the square root of that stuff that I had there before. Remember that plus or minus is what happens when you take this square root of both sides. Equal sine theta. Now that doesn't exactly look like what we have up there in the box, but I could replace theta. Let's say if theta was equal to 1 half a, then I'd have on this side, I'd have the sine of 1 half a. And on the other side, I'd have plus or minus the square root of 1 half times 1 minus cosine. Now, if it's 1 half a on the right-hand side and the one on the left-hand side is supposed to be twice as big, then I would have that would be a. So you can write it either way, but this is the way it would be written if you want to call it a half argument property or half angle property. Okay, why don't you pause this and uh, write the, do the one on the right-hand side, see if you can derive the one for uh, cosine one-half a, as I did for sine one-half a. Okay, let me run through this really quickly. Cosine two theta plus one is equal to two cosine squared theta. Multiply both sides by one half, get cosine two theta plus one equals cosine squared theta. Take the square root plus or minus the square root of one half cosine two theta plus one equals cosine theta and here again we're going to do the old switcheroo and we get one half cosine now I'm going to call that a plus one and if it's a on that side then on this side it would be one half a all right those are the two properties we're interested in this these are the half argument properties as you can see these are just a lot of these properties are just um, algebraic manipulations of one and one another. We didn't even have to do any substitutions though, except for the one half a substitution. Okay, here is the next thing. Here's a little applica application of 
to that kind of problem. This says use the double argument properties We're going to use the half argument properties and a double argument property actually to do this problem. So here's some information. If cosine of A, there's some angle A, it has a cosine value of 5 thirteenths, and if this angle is someplace between 630 degrees and 720 degrees. So uh, first it says find the sine of 2A. So let's do that one, which is has to do with a double argument property. Sine of 2a is equal to 2 times the cosine of a times the sine of a. Well, I know the cosine of a. I can put 5 thirteenths in for that, but um, what would be the sine of a? Well, let's see. Um, this interval right here is in quadrant 4. And uh, so let me draw a little picture. Uh, let me draw a little picture in quadrant four. I'm in quadrant four, and the cosine is five thirteenths. So this is five, this is 13. I could do a little bit of Pythagorean theorem, but I know that that's actually going to be negative 12 because that's a Pythagorean triple that I know. This is uh, actually a picture that look the angle is this angle around like that. Something like that there. Okay, so now I know that there's a 2 and the cosine of uh, A is 5 thirteenths and the sine of A is negative 12 thirteenths. And I multiply those things together, and that's 10 negative 120 over 169. That's the exact value of the sine of 2a. We will show that on a calculator in a second. Let's do all the exact value work first. Uh, the cosine of 1 half a is equal to, now the formula is plus or minus the square root of 1 half of cosine a plus 1. Okay, well I know the cosine of a, it is 5 thirteenths, so I can plug that in. I'm going to deal with this plus or minus thing in a bit. That's a, a bit of a question here. So the cosine of A is equal to 5 thirteenths. Actually, do, do a little fraction work here. I'm going to write 1 as 13 over 13, just so I can simplify this thing, plus or minus. That is 1 half times 18 thirteenths, which is 9 thirteenths, plus or minus the square root of 9 thirteenths, which is equal to uh, 3 over the square root of 13. I think I'll leave it on like that. Now, I've got to decide whether it's plus or minus. It's not both. This is, an, this is some specific angle. A was in quadrant 4, was between 630 and 720. So 1 half A, if A is between 630 and 720, then where does 1 half A have to be? Well, then 1 half A has to be between 315 and 360. Okay, well that that one half a that is also in the fourth quadrant. It's not always going to turn out to be the same thing. Could it could move around? You have to do this little inequality calculation here. This is in the fourth quadrant. Is a cosine value in the fourth quadrant positive or negative? Well, it's positive. So I want the positive thing. I want that value. Okay, that was part a. Now part b would be use your calculator to figure this out. Show that your answers are correct by finding the measure of angle A. Well, uh, and that means I'm going to do, uh, make sure I'm in the right mode here. I need to be in degree mode. 
and I need to do basically I'm doing arc cosine of 5 13 which is inverse cosine of 5 13 and that's going to give me an angle on the principal branch but I don't really want an angle on the principal branch I want an angle in the fourth quadrant so remember that would be uh, if I was doing arc cosine if I was doing arc if I'm doing the arc cosine of 5 13 and I'm looking for an angle between 630 and 720 that would be one such angle would be whatever that whatever our value here was is negative 67.4 I'm going to store that I'm going to do this with stored value store that in alpha a not it's not really alpha a yet but I'm going to fix that and so it would be negative 67 point four plus 360 and that could give me an angle in the fourth quadrant that is actually uh, between negative 630 and 720 so let's calculate this out um, I think if I do 720 minus alpha a minus that 67.4 that's an that's an angle between uh, 630 and 720 that in fact in that uh, interval and let's just to make sure I'm going to store this one in alpha a because that's really my alpha a that I want uh, let's check to make sure that the cosine of that angle that I've got alpha a is in fact 5 13 is that 5 13 5 divided by 13 yep okay great I've got my angle a stored in angle a or stored in alpha a and now I want to take the sine of 2a the sine of 2 alpha a is that negative 120 over 169 negative 120 divided by 169 yes it is how about um, the cosine of 1 half a let's check that out so far we're doing great 0. 0.5 whoops 0. 0.5 alpha a get some decimal value like that is that 3 divided by the square root of 13 Man, that really worked out great. Everything checked out. Okay, that's the end of this podcast. Have fun. Bye.